you want the best possible gaming performance in the smallest possible space, and we'll show you how. Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. Today we have a special project lined up for you, as you can tell. Uh, in the last weeks ago, whenever the R9 Nano initially launched, uh, we were really impressed with AMD's ability to get a ton of GPU compute horsepower in a small form factor design uh, that used significantly less power than we expected it to, uh, and obviously rival the performance of a lot of uh, higher end GPUs. Now at the time, uh, we got a lot of feedback from our community saying, hey, why do you even really need a graphics card that small? There's not really many places where that's useful. Um, and I kind of took issue with that in, in a few ways. And so one way we tried to, I'm trying to address it, or at least bring up the points, is to show you some instances where the R9 Nano and its high performance uh, small form factor really can be a benefit for users trying to build a small form factor machine that is also super high performance. So what you have here is a collection of cases that we bought and ordered in uh, to build around the R9 Nano to make sure they worked, demonstrate their performance levels as well to just kind of give you some idea of what kind of designs uh, you can take advantage of if you decide to go down the route of the AMD R9 Nano. So obviously uh, we're going to walk through these here, but I wanted to touch on the other components that we used in our system build. Obviously we have the R9 Nano itself uh, sitting here right in front of us, but we wanted to get make this a high performance system. So we went with the flagship systems or flagship processor platform from Intel for the consumer side, and that is Skylake. So we have uh, this motherboard from MSI. This is the Z170i Gaming Pro AC. It's a Z170 Mini ITX motherboard, has a ton of features on it, and obviously all the overclocking capability, all the performance uh, that you will want uh, for a, a small form factor system. We're using an Intel Core i7-6700K quad-core hyper-threaded CPU, so we're not holding anything back there. To cool it all, we uh, had our friends at Noctua send us this. This is the L9X65 cooler. It's a small form factor cooler, kind of a low profile, uh, 65 millimeters as the name would imply. It's kind of its Z height above the CPU. Uh, and that's more than, uh, that's actually adequate for most of the mini ITX chassis that we found, although there were a couple of cases uh, that needed even smaller than this. Noctua does have cases or fans for that uh, if you decide to go down that route. And then for power supply, uh, it differed depending on the case. So we, right here in front of us, we have a, oops, we have a Silverstone um, SFX power supply, 450 watt, that was necessary for uh, one of these cases, the Lian Lee here with the, with the curved front. The rest of them could actually fit full-size ATX power supplies. One note from Ken, who did all the actual builds for this particular story and project, Modular power supplies are a must if you're going this route. When you're building a mini ITX case, space is at a premium, uh, both in terms of the final build, as well as working on the cases themselves, working inside the systems. Uh, so getting a power supply with modular cables will allow you to remove those that you don't want and also will help you with installation methods as well, like maybe attaching the cables to the motherboard first before attaching them to the power supply if it happens to make things a little bit easier for you. Just, just something to keep in mind. So let's quickly walk through the different cases we have here and what our experiences with uh, each of them were. On the bottom over here, down on this side, we have the Cooler Master Elite 110. This is actually the case we used for the R9 Nano review initially. It's the lowest cost case of the ones we have here. 39 bucks on Newegg today, $29 after a rebate. So in terms of cheap mini ITX, you're not gonna find anything much less than that. Um, it uh, had a couple of quirks in it, as most mini ITX designs do. The Even though it supports a full uh, ATX size power supply, part of it sticks out the back of the case and there's a bracket to hold it in there. Still, the amount of clearance between the top of the Noctua CPU cooler and uh, the bottom of the power supply is very minimal. So you don't want to go with anything higher than this Noctua cooler. And it might even be a little bit beneficial to get something lower profile that's going to not constrict the airflow a little bit. Though we didn't have any issues with uh, CPU performance or uh, uh, throttling of any kind. Uh, it was easy to work in other than that. Uh, had plenty of space, plenty of uh, kind of air intake for the R9 Nano to work and Gaming on it was pretty awesome, actually. Now stacked on top of that is the Lian Li Q33B. It's a $95 chassis. And if you decide to go that route, make sure that you get the one that does not have the window on the side. There's one that has a window on the outside over here. This one does not. It has kind of a perforated side panel. That's important to get the air into the R9, G or R9 Nano GPU cooler, right? You want to make sure you're not uh, 
suffocating it any in terms of airflow. The other interesting design point for it is if you take the sides off of it, the front of it actually, the front and top fold down in a hinge, right? So it actually makes installation a, a lot easier in terms of mounting your motherboard, getting your CPU in there, uh, putting the hard drive in there, kind of running cables. The only caveat and trick is that as you fold it closed or reopen it, you need to be careful about where the cables are, make sure you're not disconnecting cables or when you close it, that you're not kind of shoving cables into a place where they might interfere with a fan of the CPU or the GPU cooler, right? And obviously that would be uh, pretty bad news uh, if you went down that route. Uh, here in the middle, we have probably the most unique case of our collection, the Lian Li Q30X. It's a $140 chassis, so it's fairly expensive for a mini ITX design. It has this curved front with a very large window up front uh, that really helps you show off your components, right? So if you've got your R9 Nano in there, you've got your mini ITX board and your, and your cooler, it's really easy to, to, for people to take notice of it. And even with the curved design, you're gonna get uh, some attention as well. In our completed build, we actually installed some red LED lights in there and it really kind of made things uh, look really, really cool and compelling. And, and Ken said that if he were gonna build a system off of any of these cases, this would probably be the one he would do. It was easy to build in. This is the case that required the SFX power supply. So keep that in mind if you decide to go uh, that route with the uh, Q30X. Um, there is a large fan behind the case that helps. That's kind of your exhaust fan. It's drawing all the heat as it can from the inside uh, out the back of the device, uh, which also helps with the aesthetics in terms of looks. So you don't have fans uh, coming out front or out either of the sides that way. Um, the only other caveat to this is the drive cage only supports two and a half inch drives. So uh, you can't put a full size hard drive in here. Uh, you'll need SSDs or you know, laptop hard drives uh, as your kind of option that way. Finally, we have this blue guy here. This is the uh, Ryzen Tech Metis. It's a $52 case or so. Uh, I really like the styling of it. It's kind of this brushed aluminum finish. Uh, they have it in multiple colors, but I definitely liked the blue. I'm, I'm partial to blue colors, as you guys are probably aware. It also has a window along the side. Not as big as this one, but it does have a window so you can get a glimpse of what's in there. Uh, in terms of building in it, this was probably the most difficult case to build in. The power supply mounts on the front of the design with the power plug coming in the bottom, which means you have to route an extension, internal extension, out to the back here, and it just kind of uh, was, was problematic getting things in there. The retention mechanism for it was a little bit wonky for us. Uh, we were able to finish it, obviously, and get it up and running, but it was kind of a pain uh, to do. Also, the hard drive mounting on the bottom created spacing issues for the SATA data and power cables. Again, everything worked, um, but it, it, was, it, was, it was probably the most difficult to work in. It does support a three and a half inch hard drive normally, but we had to remove that bracket that would mount up top because of the primary issue with this case. And this is what we wanted to, we wanted to bring up as well. Even though this case is mini ITX, it had the, the right length for the R9 Nano, which obviously isn't much, uh, we noticed when just kind of installing this out of the box uh, and getting the system up and running, we actually had throttling on the GPU. Uh, we saw GPU clock speeds vary much more dramatically than we had in anything else in the past and performance suffered because of it. The reason is that the uh, before we drilled these holes on top of it, you might see through the video, it was just a flat piece of aluminum. And this is where the GPU fan uh, is pointed. And there's no intake for air along the top, along the side, uh, anywhere really close enough to the GPU to make it impact. So the after 10 minutes of gaming, of, uh, of, of gaming or so, the GPU was kind of creating this little hot pocket of air and it began to suffocate itself and it began to throttle. Um, so that's something you need to be aware of when you're picking your case. These other three cases, we had no issues with that, right? If you kind of pay attention to where the uh, GPUs face and where there are uh, perforated air intakes, there's a reason why those are designed that way. Now we decided to try to fix this one, right? Which did a little bit of a uh, household modding. We sent the top of this home with Alan one night and said, hey, use your drill press. And uh, we drew a four inch by four inch square and said, just drill a bunch of holes in the top of that, you know, clean them up a little bit and we'll see if uh, that fixes it, if that solves our problem. And sure enough, it did after we brought it back, installed the case or solved the system back in this case. Uh, it performed beautifully, uh, no issues at all. And I don't think it looks too bad with the, with the photos the way it is there, although you could clean it up some by, by coloring the inside of the, of the aluminum if you wanted to do that. So just keep in mind as you look for mini ITX cases for a system build like this, that you may uh, want to make sure that the intake for the GPU, the kind of area around where the GPU fan will be on the R9 Nano, has enough air inlet uh, for that. And that's one reason why I would kind of recommend for AMD to start 
putting some kind of recommendation list on their website at least about uh, what cases they know work with the R9 Nano, which ones either don't or will need some kind of uh, modifications or changing. Um, so, I mean, overall, the, the, the takeaway from this project was to show you that there are plenty of places, and there are more cases than these that we have here, uh, that will not work with a standard length graphics card. They just don't have the capacity to hold a 10 and a half inch traditional GPU. Uh, and, and so the, the size benefits of the R9 Nano are tremendous in that way. And even though there are, there are other cards in that kind of similar form factor, the Radeon R9 Nano is the fastest of them by a significant margin. So if you are an enthusiast user who wants to build a super compact, small form factor, but still very high performance gaming PC, combining a Nano and a Skylake processor, multiple SSDs, all that type of stuff, you have the capability to do that in these chassis and thanks to uh, the performance that AMD packed into that Fiji GPU on the R9 Nano. Uh, make sure you go to PCPro.com guys, we'll have a story uh, linked in the description below here that shows some photos of all these cases of the builds, links to where you can buy them if you're interested in that, uh, and otherwise we thank everybody for their support of PC Perspective and we'll see you next time. Bye.